Sodom. We idols lost no laws. Kelpuzad is a ranged burst mage that locks down enemies and devastates them with a powerful combination of spells. Kelpuzad's Master of the Cold Dark trait is a baseline quest that increases his power as it's completed. Whenever he roots an enemy with Frost Nova or hits them with his chains, his blight level increases. Once the first crystal has lit up, Kelpuzad's ability cooldowns are significantly reduced. As reach the maximum light level, his spell power increases dramatically. God's first basic ability. After a delay, he launches an orb of death that damages the first enemy it hits, detonating and leaving an area of decay that deals damage over time. Due to its wind-up, death and decay benefits from roots and slows, or being fired from a hidden position. Frost Nova is Kel'Thuzad's first crowd control spell. When cast, a circle of runes appears and after a moment explodes, dealing damage to enemies. Depending on an enemy's proximity to its epicenter, the explosion has two different effects. Enemies along the edge are slow, while those in the middle are rooted. Kel'Thuzad's E ability, Chains of Kel'Thuzad, is a skill shot that deals damage to the first hero or structure it hits. Hello, Salibur. Welcome to chat. I'm sure BFT appreciates your good luck. Um, just a question. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, the Lich Lord's first heroic now. ability is Frost Blast. When activated, he manifests a meteor of ice and chain that pursues its target no matter how far they run. Upon contact, it deals damage and roots the target and any enemies nearby. The area indicator around the initial target shows the exact radius of the effect, forcing his enemies to either move or be frozen in place. Shadow Fissure is a more direct source of damage. Like in the Naxxramas raid, Kel'Thuzad summons a fissure that crackles no, and explodes, dealing damage to anyone inside. The, the ability is global and can be cast anywhere he has vision. And this time, if the enemy thinks they can simply step to the side, Kel'Thuzad has more than enough tricks to prove them fatally wrong. It's, it's all right, right Interloper. Interloper. We all make mistakes. Kel'Thuzad's power relies on your ability to combo his spells. Root and chain heroes to complete your Master of the Cold Dark quest quickly. Not only does this increase his overall damage, but it also grants a secondary effect to each of his level 1 talents. Kel'Thuzad's spells require setup and execution, so he excels against heroes he can outdistance. Watch out for foes that dive in for the kill. Due to his need to root and chain heroes, he tends to complete his traits quest much faster on smaller maps like Spider Queen. Right. Um, keep telling me if the volume is is off. Kel'Thuzad talent can be activated whenever he dies to respawn immediately if the quest is completed. However, you can also choose to wait and preserve its passive life steal effect. Glacial Spike allows Kel'Thuzad to summon a block of ice that explodes after a few seconds. The spike has collision and can be used to block enemies, but more than that, it can serve as a target for your chain's ability. Use this to set up an escape, or just to lock someone to an exploding pillar of ice. The Death Chill talent causes enemies who die under the effects of Frost Blast to emit another blast. A good hit can set off a chain reaction that's just chilling to behold. Finally, the Damned Return allows Kel'Thuzad to summon a shade that casts Death and Decay alongside him. With some clever plotting, even the most elusive of heroes will bow before Kel'Thuzad. Kel'Thuzad, Arch Lich of Vance Ramus, Lich Lord of the Plaguelands, Commander of the Red Necropolis, Master and Founder of the Cult of the Damned, formerly of the Council of Six, Creator of the Abomination, Summoner of Archimon, the Defiler, the Betrayer of Humanity, Hearthstone Enthusiast, and Major Domo to the Lich King himself will be here soon. We'll see you in the next episode. Allow me 
Thanks for sharing it. The expeditionary force intended to put an end to the conflict in the Kapulu sector and ensure Earth's survival. Unfortunately for Vice Admiral Alexei Stukov, things didn't go according to plan. After being betrayed and killed, his corpse was reanimated and infested. Hello everyone, um, welcome to the next game. Um, of NGS, um, we're going to be going to um, Div D East um, with Wait Till 10 versus Blunt Force Trauma. Um, and the first map we're going to is Towers of Doom. And it looks like the draft is ready. Um, so let's get right into it. So, uh, Blue team is wait till 10. And our first band is Stukov. Yeah, no one wants to play against Stukov. And Brightwing is the first band of Blunt Force Trauma, the red team. Those are the two top meta healers right now. And I would say Anduin would probably be the third third meta healer if oh, Johanna decided to go to band Johanna instead, which is Makes sense because she's also one of the meta tanks right now. No one wants to play at any of these three. I personally don't want to play against Kalthazad or um, Kalthas. You know, I would also ban one of those in the first round because those are quite annoying. Oh, there it is. KT got rid of it. Not surprised. So, which means Anduin, first pick in um, blue team. That's the last top healer, in my opinion. Um, they still have, in terms of healers, um, Rhaegar, Deckard Kane. Those are some of the next two top healers. Uh, but instead, they're going with damage with Vala. Uh, Vala is really good on this map. Uh, she can poke, and Zul will be the offlaner for the red team. He's really good at double soaking so I'm not surprised there so red team uh, I'm going to guess they're going to go for some DPS people probably save the tank uh, there it is Gazlo and Falstad Gazlo is probably the offlaner and Falstad oh or Falstad could also be the offlaner because then he could easily fly down to um, get the join the team fights yeah I bet you that's what it is I bet you Gazlo is going to be in the four man because he can be quite annoying with those towers. And Stitches, banned by the red team. Stitches is... Uh, I'm not sure why they banned Stitches. I was going to say Diablo has probably would have been a better ban. But um, blue team decided, yeah, I think Diablo is a better ban. So they had decided to um, ban that out. So which means the red team needs a healer. I'm not a healer. Oh yeah, they do need a healer and... Um, a tank, and then probably another DPS. I'm going to guess tank because they still need it, and so does the blue team. Oh, Varian! I'm assuming this is going to be Taunt Varian and Deckard. So it's going to be, I guess, a sleep. Deckard sleep, Varian Taunt, and then the Vala to finish him off. That would be my first guess on for their combo. For the blue team, oh gosh, oh my gosh, Anatychus. Oh, Varian's going to have a hard day. Garrus is just going to toss Varian, and uh, Tychus is just going to melt him. Oh, not looking good in my opinion for the red team. Varian, maybe there for the last pick, somebody else in the front line, someone that could help, Jaina? Okay, Jane is good. She can slow down Garrus whenever she tries to step up. Um, Jaina can slow him down and maybe not reach him, but Varian likes to charge in for his taunts. And I think Varian's going to have a hard day. Uh, I think I like the blue team better here, just because of Garrus. Garrus is one nasty uh, tank to play against. 
Oh, uh, well, well, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I think Red Team has a better Wombo combo, but Garrus is just going to um, destroy Varian, I think. Anyway, as I said, this is an NGS game. If you like NGS, consider being a patron for NGS. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Okay, here we go. On the left, uh, left side, we have Iceman on Garros, Mero Vinnegan on Falstad, Tantrum, Gazlo, Hannibal's on Tychus, and Azriel on Endian. And on the right side, the uh, Blunt Force Trauma, we have Puff Dog on Deckard, Old Lady on Zool, Sheep is Lion on Vala, Irrational Pie on Varian, and Exorcist on Jaina. Oops. Here we go. Oh, look, they're splitting already. Varian's going bottom, Zool's going top, and three men in the middle. A 1-3-1. One, one. Interesting. I haven't seen this one before. This is a new one. They're going to try to soak early. Oh, but Tyga spots, spots Varian. So, not too much advantage, and Gazlo is going to be top. Here comes Garrus. Varian's going to get tossed. There he goes. Here he goes. There it is. Oh, and Falstaff flies it. Oh, nice. Not enough damage. Falstaff was late coming. So the damage wasn't there. Very end escapes, but they're coming after Zul now. Here we go. He's going to be another toss. There it is. And the all damage is there this time. Zul gets deleted. They're losing Soak at the top. Um, Gazlo is just um, pushing there. Okay, everyone's going camps. Vala's going to... Um, Clear mid. Alright, so Vala went auto attack build. Falstad um, goes to the Gathering Storm. Varian's overpower and Jaina's doing the Glow Quest. Both, both teams got the camps, but Red Team got it a little bit faster. Here comes Garrus. You need to be aware where Garrus is all the time, and, and Jaina needs really needs to slow slow when he comes up. Let's see what the J Jaina went the uh, um, region quest, so she didn't get she's not going for the machine gun build. Oh, Jaina, Jaina, you need to slow him, or his variant's gonna die every time. He doesn't have oh, he does have target at four level four. Nice, okay, nice pull by Andwin, but. I didn't think Garrus was in trouble. Because Garrus has the, all that armor. And it looks like blue team is going a 1 1 3, trying to gank um, Zul all the time. Oh, yeah, there's Garrus. Varian, where are you going? You're going to get thrown. Get out of there. Nice dodge. Nice dodge. Very nice dodge there. Jaina's going to be up for the objective, but the losing soak, the 1-1-3 one, on one, the blue team, is working. Zul better be careful, because there's two in the mid. Or he's going to channel it, so they're going to... Oh! Tychus takes out Vala. She loses a stack on her gambit quest. They're going to trade out on the top. Going to fight in the middle. Oh, nope, they lost the middle because of Jaina. I mean, Vala died. Only 32 stacks, but she lost um, some attack speed. Oh, and Gary gets thrown again. Someone's got to be on Garrus duty. Red team is about half a level behind. Because um, they were doing the 113 for a while. Oh, Varian. There's no not enough potions in the world to save anyone who gets thrown. Oh, uh, they should have um, taken Anduin first instead of Vala. Anduin's a good counter against Garros. 
They both hit level seven, so they're at least same ta talent tier, but red team's about half a level behind. So he's trying to do his best to soak. He's a little bit behind. You gotta be careful of the gank. Okay, yeah, see, Jaina needs to watch Garrison to slow him. Where is he going? Oh, Jaina, you need to slow him down. Oh, look at that. I mean, Jaina did a lot of damage with her blizzard, but still, they got thrown. Volley got his first gambit, 54, but there's, she got a long way to go. Afraid to step up with um, Garrison there. All right, next objective, middle and bottom. Looks like Blue's going to give up the bottom and just fight for the middle. They're going to trade? Yeah, I think they're just going to trade. Smart move, because Blue team's ahead. Why, why force to fight in the middle? Just trade and keep pushing. And Gazlo is just double soaking. He hasn't even joined in a team fight yet. Maybe someone should think about ganking someone. But can't can't do that with Vala. I mean, with Falstad. Oh, Falstad's diving in. Oh, and he gets it. Are they going to counter kill? Yep, counter kill. Vala and Falstad. Is there a taunt? There's. A, yeah, nice. Vala. Okay, Vala's proving her worth there. Nice job, Vala. Gets um, Falstad and Garros. Nice. So now they're almost caught up in experience. They both all have ten. We can see. Stay a while and listen, strafe, ring of frost, shield wall. Okay, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Taunt, mighty gust, grab bomb. Okay, guys, that's going to be joining the um, fights now. Odin and salvation. Oh, no, no stun. Oh, nice taunt. Can we get him? Is he going to do a gazel bomb to get out of there? Oh, gust to save him. And, and the bar. Oh, they still get it. Taunt on Garros. Everyone, false that. Oh, nice sleep, but can they get out of it? Oh, interrupted the, sh the, um, the, what did you call that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Interrupted the Holy World Salvation. Nice. Could have um, gotten more kills. Blue team on the red, but um, Anduin was interrupted. What is that? Oh my gosh, there's a, there's a bug. Oh, it looks like a portal. Huh. I'm not sure what caused that. But that's kind of funny. All right, here we go. Fight one objective. A lot of um, are they going? No, they're out of position. They couldn't get to it. No, Varen's dying for it. Oh, but, and he didn't even get it. Follow up. No. Yeah, you you really need. Oh, Edwin, pull one inch pull. Dies for it. Okay, one for one. Healer versus DPS. Stare taunt. Can Jaina slow? Nope. Okay, not too bad. They lost objective. They're down, but experience-wise, they're just a little bit behind. Not too bad. Zulu's going to try to get 13 because Gazlo's still in the middle. Oh, Gazlo's coming back top. Now they're going for the um, camps. So we'll see. They're just going to camps and they're going to fight in the middle of the camps. Everyone's back up. All the heroics except Gust will be up for his next team fight. There's some soak here. Uh, I guess that could be the blue team soak. Yep. So this red team is just floundering around. Zul is doing a decent job keeping up with uh, blue's one one three. But with the one one three, the blue team got thirteen first, but red team's not too far behind. Zul's a lot faster clearer than Gazlo, even with his towers. But he's losing soak because blue team's got two people soaking. Red team needs to fo force the issue since they have four people in the bottom. But looks like they're willing to place past them. Just wait for the next. Oh, here we go. You're going to get thrown. Varen gets thrown. Taunted. And there's the ring. Can he save him? No. Oh, and there's the shield. Oh, nice interrupts again. Nice sleep by um, Decker to interrupt Anduin, but 
Still, Varian's dead. There goes their tank. Zul, Zul got the first one. Are they going to fight for it? Nope. Now we have a tank. Smart move. Smart move. But that means, are they going to boss? Nope. They're going to just gank Zul. Get out of there. He's going to get thrown. His shield is not going to make a difference. He did his all, but, I mean, they're all full health. They're pushing bottom. They need to push. Here comes Odin. But blue team's going for boss. I, I don't think they're going to get this um, tower. But they will get the boss, and they're going to flank him. Uh, nope. Here they come. They're getting out. Smart. Uh, they barely touched it. Look at that. 13,000 still. Uh, 15,000. I don't know how much percent that is. Someone do the math. <laughs> so with that, um, blue team pulled out ahead about half a level. I mean, they're split. It's 5v2. They need to do something. Okay, they're going to go to bottom. But still, it's 5v2. You got, I mean, not 5v4. 4v2. They need to force a fight when they're split like that. But I guess red team's being a little hesitant. They're afraid of Garros. Okay, are they going to trade the top again and fight the middle? Blue team... Is ahead of, oh no, they got both towers. Red team's actually got one tower ahead. All right, here we go. They're trading the top. There's two in mid. Red team's got to force a fight. They don't rec realize it though. Okay, that's good. Red team's got oh, Boston flies in too too late. But. Uh, red team actually got two of the objectives, so that's good. Good team, good for the red team, but they're about quarter level behind in experience. Oh, there goes Garros. Vala really needs theirs. I mean, Jaina. Oh my gosh. Jaina needs to slow Garros whenever he comes in. He needs to save her Q just for that. I mean, they killed Garros, which is nice, and they forced the ult of Anduin. But the gust saves him from any other um, follow-up damage. Let's see his damage. Vala is 23. Jaina with... Tw oh! The sleep misses. Sad. Here comes Odin. They're going to try to force it. They're going to go all in. Yep. Nope. I mean, that was a good call because Garrus wasn't there. Look at attack. is 41 hero damage. My gosh. Probably all Odin. Come on, yeah! I'm false damage to prison! Oh! Oh! Nice pull! With false head queuing out and then the pull from Anduin. Nice save on the blue team. Very nice. I thought he was dead for sure with the taunt and this Jaina. Okay, let's see. Vaz 116. That's respectable. Oh, there he goes again. Protected is saving him. Taunt by Garrus. Vaz, can he... Oh, the gust saves him again. They're doing nice, but oh, Garrus, nice. Jane is doing some work on Garrus. She's not slowing him, but she's killing him. Nice work, Jaina. And Red Team gets the objective. I don't think um, Gazel has joined a team fight at all. He's the only time I've seen him use his ult is when they tried to gank him in the middle. Interesting strategy. Why pick Ga um, Gravel Bomb? If you're not going to join a team fight, and the first um, enemy tower of G Gust is he going to come in? First enemy t tower goes to the red team, and they're going to invade. Nice, nice capture. They're going to have. Are they going to? Yep. Are they going to um, protect it? Garrus is not there, so. Um, we should do it, but Jaina's not there either. She's doing the camp. Oh, Gar I mean, very. Vala! Oh, no! Too slow in the sleep. There goes another stack on 
um, Vala. But they did protect the tower for now. Oh, yes. Look at this. Oh, where is... Uh, sleep has been used. There's the gust. Enderman heals them all because of her, his um, light shield, his, his little bubble. They need to back out, but here comes the, um, the camp. Looks like they're going to get a free clear without Vala. But if they can hold on to this tower, the objective's on the bottom. Oh! The minion gets Garos, but um, Jaina just whittled him down. Can they protect this tower for 16 more seconds for the objective? Well, it looks like it. Here comes the objective. Is anyone going to channel it? <laughs> it's like Deckard's going to channel it. And they're going to get it. Because Garrus, I mean, when you lose your front line. So, uh, red team gets 21st and they've caught up in the in the um, tower shots. They're ahead by one. Let's see, jana has got Cold Snap. With the Ring of Frost, does damage in the middle. Glory to Alliance for the banner. Death's, death Siphon for Vala with the infinite strafe. Oh, there's the taunt! And there's the, Oh! Even with the pull, pull. Enderman just pulled him to the other side of the ring. Oh, and Jane is doing some work. Let's see how many kills does Jane have. Jane has four kills and three deaths. Vala's opposite, three kills and four deaths. So she's got one more left on the gambit. Oh, the ganked um, Gazo. I didn't even see it. Too busy looking at stats. Looks like they're going to trade out the middle for the bottom. It's all five in the middle. And the objective is in the middle and bottom. Looks like Tyke is going to clear. He used Odin to get the um, bottom tower. Objective in 27 seconds. And Red Team steals the camp. But they're going to try to get the other camp. They got 15 seconds. Nope. They're just going to set up on the bottom. Looks like um, Falstad tried to gank Zul, but... Oh, sleep! Nice! No, can he get a double kill? Oh, yes! And the ring gets him! Oh, nice job! Vala and Jaina, they're... Um, DPS is doing some work. Good call in getting the bottom tower first. And they're going to get both objectives. So that's 12. Oh, this could be game. This is GG. This is GG if they get both. And it looks like it. Nice. Nice comeback. There you go. GG. Blunt Force Trauma gets the first one. I thought Garros was going to be trouble, and he was in the beginning. But once um, Jaina got the, her ult, he was hitting money on that ult. Uh, let's see. Tychus was the top lead damage with 65. Jaina with 43. Paula, not as much because she died four times, so she lost a lot of Gambit. She only had 5% uh, left on her attack speed. But still, she was still, she got four kills and Jana got five kills, which is a lot more. Oh no, 12 kills to 11. Wasn't bad. I think the biggest difference was blue team doing the 1 1 3 where they were double soaking. So whenever they um, had a team fight, they were usually outnumbered because either Falstad, yeah, it's usually Falstad if it's not there. But when Falstad was there, he was able to gust away the team. So they couldn't do as much follow-up. Uh, because uh, Anduin's um, light bubble was saving them a lot. But with um, Deckard's sleep, that nullified um, Anduin quite a bit. So that was a nice, nice um, ult by Deckard there. And then Jane was hitting those... Um, Ring of Frost money. I mean, that was funny. On one instance where Falstad was caught in one end of the um, 
one end of the um, ring, and Anduin just pulled him to the other end of the ring. So, either way, he ended up dying. Anyway, that was GG. So, it looks like the first, I mean, the second map is has been picked, and and then we're going to Brax's holdout. Okay, so while we set up the lobby, let's see who picked that. I believe that was the red team. Okay, so let's see. The map bands, since I forgot to mention it um, previously, are Garden Terror, Volskaya Foundry, Alterac Pass, Sky Temple. They look like all big maps where um, it's more macro heavy. So I guess this both these teams won team fight, um, which was evident in Terror of Doom and then Braxis Holdout, which will be the next map. So this will be fun again. Um, no double soaking needed for the offlaner, since it's a two-lane map. They're just going to stay in their lanes with the occasional gank. And uh, we'll see how they decide to do it. Since they um, everyone's in their own lanes, they won't need to do something weird like a 1-1-3 or a 1-3-1, which the red team started and then Blue team decided, oh, okay, let's split up with two double soakers instead. But anyway, here we go with the draft of Braxis Holdout. Um, first ban is Puff Dog. I mean, not Puff Dog. Puff Dog is the captain of the red team, and he'll be picking, banning. Brightwing. Okay. Are they going to ban Jaina? <laughs> Jaina was a big problem there. But Junkrat. Oh, yeah. Junkrat is obnoxious on this map because he keeps getting booped. He's actually obnoxious on all maps, though. So. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, Junkrat is gone. I don't like playing with him either. Are they going to ban KT again? Nope. Jaina. Oh, KT. That leaves KT open. He's really good on this map. Lots of wave clearing. They like to get stay bunched up in this map. I, I would ban KT. KT's always my second ban. I can let them have Brightwing or Joanna or Stuka off. I just don't want to play against KT. And so the blue team decided Stuka off, which leaves KT open. Are they going to KT? Uh, last time they did Vala. I don't know if they want to do that again. Vala died four times last time and wasn't as effective as she could have been. Variant? Oh, first pick Variant? Really? Huh, why would you first pick Variant? I mean, he, he did well, but yeah, Anduin and Vala is up and they took him. Huh, interesting. Why would you pick first pick? Because, I mean, there's plenty of tanks. Um, they, I mean, other than Joanna, every tank was available. Unless he's going to go like, oh, KT, there we go. They, I guess they didn't want to show their hand too early. But that could have left them for the blue team to k take KT. But I don't know. I like it now. So now they have a stun and a taunt. If they could combo that together... Um, whoever the other DPS should be able to follow it up also. That could be bad. <laughs> yes. And those leaps interrupted my um, light shield. No more doing that. Didn't like that. Get out of town. Respect ban. Respect ban on the red team. And same with Garrosh. That was a pain in the ass. No Garrosh for you. Okay, so blue team needs a tank. Let's see. Ah, Anubrak's good here because then you could 
um, cocoon KT and just kill everyone else. But Anubrak has and has the spell shield ETC. Interesting. Do I like it? Ragnaros, offlaner. Mm, I mean, you got the lava way, but the lava way doesn't do much against the Zerg. But, I mean, it's still lava wave. <laughs> it's really good. But I'm not sure if I like ETC. Because you got, I mean, unless he marshes KT, KT can interrupt it really easy. So I, I think the red team needs another interrupt. Uh, let's see. Greymane and Rhaegar. Okay. Okay. I, I, I like. Oh, Hammer. Oh, let's see. Greymane's not going to touch Hammer. It's only going to be KT. KT's the only one who can reach him without getting pounded. And if anyone tries to get close to Hammer, ETC's just going to boop him away. Hmm. I mean, I like the zone control of the blue team, but red team has so much more damage with KT and Greymane. Oh, I wonder, is this a Bloodlust game? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. And once again, if you love NGS, consider becoming a patron. Sure they can. Use your love. Uh, okay. On the blue team for wait till 10, Iceman is on ETC, Merovingerden on Vala, Tantrum on Ragnaros, Hannibal on Hammer, and Azriel on Anduin. And on the right side, Puff Dog is on Rhaegar. Sheepish Lion on Greymane, Irrational Pie on Varian, Old Lady on Dehaka, and KT on Exorcist. Alright, here we go. No A ramming in the middle because there is no middle. Let's see, Vala's going for the W build. Um, ETC is going to Crack Rock for the. Um, the globe quest KT's also going go globe twist it's a good map because you got the globes in the middle i mean on the bottom of each there we go kt's in trouble but it's still kind of early hammer's going for the um looks like the aa build oh they were fighting for the globe i didn't see who got the globe I'm going to guess Ragnaros because he has more health. Nice stun hammer, but not enough damage early in the game. Looks like pretty even. Everyone got level 2 pretty much at the same time. Hammer's just hammering away. Let's see. Uh... They're going objective is in three seconds, so camp time. The bottom team has an easier time getting to camp because they only have the siege, the easy camp, while the bottom team has their hard camp to to get it, but it's it's a better push since they have the spell damage. But red team is smart, look at that. You're gonna give the early objective to get both camps. Are they gonna Try to gank. Yes, they are going to gank. Ragnaros. This is slow. Oh, but the, the Haka was trying for objective. If she had followed up with the tongue, that could have been a dead Ragnaros. Meanwhile, KT's in trouble. Oh, K oh KT missed the route, but still survives. Ragnaros coming back down to help. Looks like the blue team's getting a better push even though the red team's got both camps there's the taunt there's the gray main oh there's the end of and pull that was that was pretty nice but still i mean it would end when kt was had to fall back a little because he was low in health K 
KT is going for a globe because he had that globe quest. That stops the um, countdown on objectives. Nice slide by ATC in the boop. Baron's going in by himself. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. So if KT was there a little bit earlier when Varian came for the taunt, they would have done more damage. The Aka pushed off Ragnaros. So red team is slightly ahead. Oh. There goes Greymane. Almost not enough damage. <coughs> they need to coordinate the damage between KT and Greymane at the same time. A lot of times KT would come in with damage then have to back out. And then three or four seconds later, Greymane comes in. There's the taunt. There's the boob. Everyone is. Oh! They almost had it. They coordinated it, but not enough damage just yet. Uh, globe's up. KT, go get the globe. You know you want it. You know you want it. You only have eight. You still got a way to go. ETC, taunt. Oh, yo, Andrew with the pull. Oh, still. Between um, KT's bomb and Rhaegar biting him on the ass. Oh, but Vol gets a counter kill. Two for one. Oh, Vol is going. Oh, nice root by KT, or else Vol would have gotten another kill. Yeah, it looks like blue team's going to get the objective on this. Unless the I can get the can get the kill. Here comes Greymane. No, no, no tongue. Oh, look at Greymane. Oh, bye bye Greymane. Yeah. The Aka went off um, to lane instead of helping uh, Greymane. I think they could have at least saved her. I don't think they could have killed her, but could have saved her. And there goes KT. Oh no, it started off for pretty good for the red team. Looks like um, blue team had a nice comeback when they tried to gank Ragnaros and failed. Progress brought a little bit ahead for the blue team, 54%, 38%. And blue team's already gotten some damage. Tower down, gate down. Second tower is going to be down. They got to wait for KT before they can engage on hammer. Okay, here we go. What can they do? Are they going to fight on the tower? Nope, they're backing up. There's the root. No taunt. Okay. Slowly pushing. There's the um, globe slowly pushing them back. There's the taunt. Oh, nice root by Anduin. They're all clumped up for Hammer. <laughs> they gotta go back again. Hammer's doing some work. He, yeah, he's going straight AA build. And Anduin's doing the double root. Oh. Taunt without no yeah, Anderman couldn't pull him out in time. It was a good try by Anderman, but KT bursted him down, and then Var Varian with the follow up. I guess he cued him. Are they gonna? Is there a taunt? Nope. There's a boop instead. Ball's gonna grab this. Careful, Dahaka. Nice tongue, but it's not gonna be enough. Red team is just gonna steal the camp, cause Dahaka's fine, I guess. Oh, Anduin's in trouble. I think he's going to... There's the taunt. There's the boop. And there's Anduin. If uh, it was Ted and ETZ had Marsh, could have saved him. But not yet. Looks like Ted's going to be reached by Red Team first. And it looks like the Red Team's going to get the first objective. They need to get some... These. Oh! Oh, is he going to get him? Like, bye! Gets him! KT with the Pyroblast right when the objective comes. Nice timing. Nice timing. Of course, they still have to go through those towers and gate, but that's just going to melt it with the Zerg. Oh, eh, eh, oh. <laughs> I was going to say, blue team just got 10. If, he, if they were able to pick the talents... They might have been able to kill anyone, but still, it looks like they're going to save the fort. Here comes Lava Wave. They saved the fort. Nice job. Taunt! And a Greymane! Oh! Oh! There's the... 
um light shield oh light shield saves them all and they get two kills i think varian's gonna be in trouble too yeah oh nice blue team get comes back with three kills and i think they're gonna get the first fort even though red team got the objective and got the kill right before the objective they couldn't because ragnaros used this trait to save the fort and lava wave to push them back and the experience is nearly even but the structure wise blue is ahead and they're gonna steal the camp oh what is he doing kt face check the bush yeah okay not smart thing to do when you're squishy not a smart thing jack is getting the camp and blue is also head on the top no tower and again on the top red team is slightly behind on experience about uh, a quarter of a level we're gonna check boss okay boom etc went stage dive instead of um mosh interesting Looks like everyone's going to fight in top. Ray goes slightly behind. Doc is in trouble. Oh, Rhaegar is just going to clear. Bottom. You need to be careful. All um, alter up, but I don't think it's going to do any good against Anduin's um, light shield because he's going to uh, save anyone that KT is going to try to pyroblast. Here comes the lava wave. Get out of there. To try to get this fort. Oh, he's going to just do pyroblast a full health Vala with Anduin paying attention. Okay, I think KT's ult has been rendered useless. Unless they could force the light shield from Anduin out before he uses it. I think this fort is going to be gone. Oh, look, but Dhaka gets the bottom fort. Nice job. Nice job, Dhaka. Wasn't even paying attention there. Too focused on KT's ult. <laughs> Hammer's low, but um, Anduin's doing a good job keeping him uh, alive. There they go. They're coming for the kills. Low Bloodlust! Bloodlust! EC comes with the dive. Varian's in trouble. So is Greymane. Oh. I didn't even notice the Bloodlust. I guess I should have checked the ult. Uh oh. I was going to say Greymane was in trouble. Is there a taunt? Nope. Dhaka's doing pretty good against Ragnaros. He keeps pushing him back. Ragnaros is a bit squishy. But on the top, between Vala and Hammer, they got nice poke. And pretty soon, this top fort's going to be gone. With just Hammer. Oh, there's, there's the light shield. Anduin is on point with his heels. I think next time you need to ban Anduin. Let him have right away. Oh, but the... Oh, yeah, the, the light shield was gone, so... The um, KT could use the fire blast, which made him lower. I don't know why KT ETC went back in. Oh, Kramian <laughs> dives the tower and gets the kill in Anduin. Nice. See, that's how you need to do it. You need to bait out the light shield to enable KT's ult and then have ETC dive right back in. I'm not sure why he dove right back in. He died for it. But blue team did get the top fort. And they're fighting for it. Okay, let's say one on one. Nice tongue. Can he get it? Do you have anything else? Uh oh. Here comes ETC stay dive. Does he have burrow? Does not have a burrow. Oh. Nice stage dive. But are they gonna sacrifice the top? Yep, looks like they're gonna sacrifice the top fort for the docker kill. I guess that's worth. If they get it. And if they don't die, 
All right, nice retreat there. All right, camp time. But the bottom lane is pushed out quite a bit. Lava Wave is just pushing it back. But with Lava Wave, it's going to be a long game. Because even if Red Team pushes it out, Lava Wave is just going to say, nah, -uh. this is my lane. They're just doing camps. Oh, it's an evade. A little too late. Rhaegar. Don't don't face check. Don't face check. Don't face check. You face checked. Okay. Oh, and Rhaegar is the tank. He slowed him down. Tore him the end of it. And the bloodlust. Nice combo. Did he have more? And the power blast. Edwin's dead. Is he gonna get it? Is he gonna get it? Oh, 700 health left. The chasing. Baron, is there taunt? There's the boop. And he taunt, there's the taunt, there's the gray main. KT has nothing though. KT is gonna dive in for it. Oh, sidestep the root. Nice. Alright. What are they gonna do? Anyone there? Are they gonna go for boss? Nope, they're just gonna go for objective. They're gonna go for camps and objective. Careful. Here comes ETC, there's the boop. Variant, get out of there. Nice. Let's see, Vala. How much is it? 64? That's pretty good. It's doing good. Vala's doing good on the her stack quest. Um, KT's already got his quest. Who else has quest? Oh, nice, Anna. See, that's how you do it. You need to taunt Anduin. And ETC just page dive. I think a better Mosh would have been a better. There's the Ton Ragnaros. Here comes Lava Wave. Get out of there. Oh, almost gets to Haka and um, Rhaegar. Everyone retreated nicely. Good job there. And the red team's got the objective and it's pushing top. Of course, blue team's pushing bottom objective too, but that's nothing. Red team's slightly ahead on experience, but they're going to get a lot of um, structure value on the top. The hack is gonna push out the bottom lane, get the objective. Question is, will this top keep fall? Oh, KT, what are you doing? KT was tanking it. Why was he up front? Everyone else was poking from the back, but KT says, hey, we're in the lead. I'm gonna tank this. Okay, so that makes experience even, and they did not get the keep, even though it's only got a little under 8,000 health points left. Lava Wave is just... Uh-oh! Uh oh Rhaegar's in trouble. Stage dive into nothing, into a bush. I really think Marsh was the better play here. I mean, he did get a kill on Docker with stage dive, but... They clump up so much when Varian taunts and then Greymane dives in. Especially with Bloodlust. Everyone wants to stay together to get that. I think Marsh would have been a better call there. But we'll see. I mean, they did make it work once. So, I mean, can't fault them for that. That's Red Team. Oh, Red Team's going for Ragnar. Where's the taunt? There's the taunt. There's the Rhaegar Bite and the Grey Mane to finish it. Gotta be careful. Here comes the follow through. Marsh him now! Nope, sorry, no Marsh. But there's the Bloodlust. Anduin's... Anduin got the Light Shield but can be in trouble. Oh, yeah, Hammer is dead. ETC dead. Oh, Anduin dead. Can they get Vol? No, Vol is, sa is safely behind the um, towers. Nice job by Red Team. KT? Uh, let's see. KT still has her Pyroblast. His Pyroblast, if Val steps up with Anduin dead, I think she's going to get a, a fireball in the face. There's the first keep. And they're just going to walk by the towers and get the other keep. The gray main there, it's going to just die, die, die. 
Objective and 10. Are they going to go for objective? Are they going to... No. Yeah, they're going for objective. Boss, maybe? Two seconds before objective. Oh, trap. There's a trap. There is a trap. They're not going to fall for it. Oh, shh. We're hunting hammer. Marsh it! No! Sorry, no marsh. There's a taunt. There's the... Ragnar's kills the Rhaegar first. This doesn't look good. No healer. No bloodlust. Oh, ETC dead. One for one. And there's the power blast. Okay. Oh, no. Yes. So, two for one. And they're going for the camp. I thought it was the power blast, but it was more just uh, spread the love to burn. Now, they're doing camps. I didn't think um, Red Team would survive that with no healer. But, you know, KT's um, burn and then Grey Man coming in. That's quite the combo. Red Team definitely has the burst damage while uh, Blue Team has to sustain damage with the Hammer and the Vala. Vala can do burst damage too, but she's doing the W build, so it's more of a spread spread uh, damage she had gone q build or even the auto attack build she could focus down someone okay blue team checked the boss but red team said nope go and just get the camps and go for kill nice dodge by the hucker there on the route katie needs some heals katie needs some heals no heals for you katie <laughs> lot of wave in the bottom doesn't do much against mercenaries. Red team's looking for a fight. Oh, nice route to prevent the taunt. Oh, there's the taunt on Vala. Nice. Follow up. Bloodlust. Here we go. Endman's dead. Hammer dead. Oh. <laughs> it's a five man team white. This is GG. This is GG. Nice job. I mean, with the hammer, they were had the early push, but again, late game. Uh, I think it was the red team that waited until ten to do the damage. Um, wait, for, wait till ten had the lots of sustained damage. Okay, let me see if I can pull up the damage. Let's see. Damage wise, Hammer, yep, Hammer had the most damage with 93, but, and Vala had 78, but the burst damage between Grey Mane and KT was, I mean, in fact, both Vala and Hammer had more damage than the Red Team's damage, but it was the Red Team's burst damage where you had the taunt and the bloodlust. And then the gray main and the KT with the damage overall. It was uh it was bursty. Oh my gosh. GG on um for the red team. All right, um, let me see if I can get an interview. Um uh I'll be right back. Okay, um, so we're going to do a team interview with Blunt Force Trauma. Um, congratulations, BFT. GG's. How did you all feel about that match? Yeah, uh, I have to admit, the first draft with Garros, I actually picked them because Garros was a oh, pain in the butt, but you all handled them really well. Oh. Yes. 
Yeah. He was just flanking y'all and coming in and tossing him. But um, I had noticed y'all waited till 10, and then you got the ults, and then you just ran him over for a nice comeback. Yes. Same with the second match. Uh, the they the wait for t till ten team pushed y'all back, but as soon as y'all got ten, then you just pushed harder. Yeah. Y'all just had a really nice combo with the um, taunt, bloodlust. Greymane, KT, you had so much burst damage. Oh. Was that your plan, just to burst damage them down single targets? Yeah. Yes, his light shield saves a lot of people. In the first game, I noticed um, whenever he did that light shield, Deckard slept them, and they did a good job nullifying that um, ult. Right. Um, and, and okay, yeah. And uh, respect Ben on the second game for... Um, Running out Deckard. So that was pretty good. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll let you all go. GG, well played. Um, ho ho hopefully, oh, you're welcome. It's, it's, it's always fun to cast. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so I've been told that the interview was not heard. Uh, sorry about that. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, anyway, they just said they had fun and they had trouble adjusting um, to like Garage and Anduin. Anduin did a really good job. So props on Anduin on the other team. Um, I'm sorry y'all didn't hear the interview. I'll have to look into that, why that happened. That was the first time I did an interview, so um, that was experimental. I, th I thought I had that fixed. Anyway, GG's for um, the red team, Bone Forest Trauma versus um, Wait Till 10. They win 2-0 on a Division D East. Um, so until next time, um, thank you all for watching the stream and sorry again about the interview I'm not quite sure what happened there i'll try to get that fixed for the next time until then um good night next time i'll see you at the nexus